Well, my friends, Palm Beach has treated me good, guys. I am here at the 2024 Palm Beach Boat Show, and I saw something when I was doing my setup video that I wanted you guys to see. And it's this brand new Bahama 41 GT with quad engines. And all right, so we got a two for one today because you, you're going to give us a walkthrough and you're also going to give us a walkthrough. Can you guys introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Scott Henley. Okay. Are you rolling right now? We're good. We, we got Scott and Michael. Correct. Okay. Good morning. We're here at the 2024 Palm Beach Boat Show. We're debuting the new 41 GT model. Everybody's been asking for the blue row seating, so we did a uh, revamp the whole console, the hard top, the seating as well. That was all Mike's doing. Mike Hartline here is a naval architect. We brought him on board about a year ago for this mission, and he has taken the reins and done a wonderful job. And we're so happy to have him and welcome him on board to the Bahama so, family. So, Scott, what do you do at, at Henley? What do you do? Uh, uh, Scott Henley, what do you do at Bahama? Well, I, I'm part of a, one of the founders and started it and helped design it and rig them and started from. I, I do all the little finished key details. And for the record, you said. Hey, Rafford, I don't really want to be on camera, but I say that because some people will say, hey, I don't want to be on camera. I had people that tell me all the time I don't want to be on camera, but you know this boat very well, right? Yeah. Well, from, yes, from the ground up. Yes. And now you made some changes, Michael, yes, sir. right? So, guys, I just wanted to make that clear because sometimes I'm in front of the camera and all of a sudden people just see me all animated and then I... They see me, they're like, oh, dude, I'm not like him, you know? So, so I just want to make, make sure people don't freak out and stuff like that. Okay, so what do you want to show us, Scott? Let's go walk well, around. I, I'd like to add something about Scott. Okay. Um, Scott, Scott's very modest. He's also the president of this company. He founded this company 18 years ago. Um, but being the president isn't important to Scott. Yeah, he wears the badges that he's a boat builder. And that's what makes Bahama Boat Works such a And they're beautiful boats because we see them out in the water, Miami. I mean, I've filmed them and, and they're just awesome. And I would love to talk about the history of how, while you while you showed me this boat in those that's 18 years. Show. Well, listen, those are, the, those are the stories everybody loves, right? Well, the main thing is I'm, I'm a qual at the level of detail. Of mm -hmm. Micromanager when it comes to the finicky stuff or what matters to me, the right hardware, uh, the fit, the finish, the ride, the balance. Uh, I'm in aviation a little bit, so I understand weight and balance, hydrodynamics. This isn't just a. So you do all this with that whisper voice, and you're like, we guys. Do with, we do this with <laughs> Zalo JT. All right. These are, these are boats that have been tried and true, tested, modified. And uh, this is our basically our third go round to get the bottom just right. Third, the guys. The bottom is set up with a six degree bow entry, okay. twenty four degree dead rise, the longitudinal strikes in the back, mm -hmm. all the wet part of the boat's in the water doing all the work. That's where we want the lift. So we tried to balance the big, part, the magic number with the DP bottoms has been 24 degrees. Everybody's tried 23, 22, but it seems 24 is the magic number. We've got a 60 degree bow entry, which is very sharp to slice through the waves. Yeah. So we can open up the waves and make it nice and easy so you don't get that pound feeling. The longitudinal strikes in the back of the boat with the flat V pad, what we try to incorporate, it's very easy to push a flat bottom boat through the water mm -hmm. and economical, but they, they ride rough. It's very you think more horsepower to put a deep V bottom through the water, but they, they have a tendency to roll. So now we try to, how do we balance that? So we've taken our longitudinal strikes and added some flat characteristics to it. And we did that on the back of the boat. So when the boat's running up on plane, that's where the boat's in the water the most. So that's where we want those effects to work, that lifting effect to work. Plus our longitudinal strikes in the back act as little rudders. So there's no bounce here. You can literally let go of the wheel and it tracks like And it road. tracks straight. The other thing we tried to do, if we want to point out here, here's, yeah. a big, here's a big feature. Is we tapered our trailing edges of our lifting strakes so the water's coming off the back of the boat very clean. So we eliminates all cavitation, any kind of slip. When you make a turn, you don't have any 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 barking of the motors. Water is clean to the engines. Always have good water pressure. Always have good cooling. That was a big, big... And we've made modifications over 
since the uh, late 80s, so we made a lot of modifications to that and keep tweaking it each time. Um, every time you do a design, you build one, you think, okay, this is going to be perfect. But then when you run it and you test it, you go, you know what, next time let's do it like this. And that's kind of how this So this is the third time? Between the other manufacturers that I've been involved with, yeah, this is the this is the this is primo. It's like the third time's a charm. All right, guys. All right, so let's go up there, Scott. Uh, S -S Scott found his wings real quick. Yes, he did. He, he's you yeah. found your wings, Scott. You're go. Let's go. This is not his first rodeo. Let's go. Come on, get in here. I just walked in and I feel a huge beam. What are we talking beam on this? Eleven, eleven, yeah. 11 foot beam. Big. Forty-one point three inches long. One of their unique features is, hey, I like big cockpits. I'm fishing by, I'm yeah. fishing by heart, and I, I can't stand working in a cramped cockpit. Yeah. So the best thing about it is big and roomy, so you can have people or the mate, whoever's angling, and the mate can be there to help the gap the fish. A guy can wire the fish. There's enough room in the cockpit to make that happen. One of one of my big peeves was keeping your dry storage. Yeah. So when it comes to uh, when we used to run to the islands all the time, we'd end up having to put our our gear in, in garbage bags if it's a bad, really rough day. And water's everywhere where we, we'd have to put them in garbage bags below deck. So now we've solved that problem. And this is very unique. And what I love about it is we've got big gutters and drains. We've got a landing right here for the soft neoprene gasket that's on the underside of the hatch. A hard rubber O-ring gasket. This does a couple of things. One. It controls the distance and the amount of pressure that this that the black neoprene gas is going to see. So people say, "Well, I've seen that all. It's on other boats." But when they overload this gasket, it wants to push out and push, and then it'll it'll fall out, and then it ends up hanging. So this this controls the O-ring gasket controls the spacing. So there's a nice even pressure on the gasket that does its done. So the water has to get through this first seal, then get through the O-ring seal. And the other thing it offers. When the dog gets hatched down, yeah. it actually retracts or pulls it down tight. So it has a true positive lock. If you notice, show that again. There you, there you go. There you go. You, so we have a strike plate right here. When you close this down, it actually pulls it down tight. The other thing it does, the way where hatches are made, there's no deflection, there's no hatch chatter, you don't feel any any movement. Uh, a lot of manufacturers will use a double jointed hinge because it makes their hinges, makes your hatches fit the hatches easier. But we have a true uh, studded, no fastener showing, and it's, it's like a door on your hinge or your boat. I mean, on your house. You, the hinge got to be lined up perfect, otherwise it won't. It won't. Uh, well, I can already tell that you really love analyzing the details, and and I'm assuming you're a fisherman yourself. Yes, that's where I grew up. I've been oh. running boats for 30 years. My, I grew up on the water fishing. I ran boats by, from from mating, long lining to uh, running boats for the last since about till 90 from 1990 1978 to about 1998 I did it for So five. tell me a little bit about the founding of Bahamas real quick uh, cuz cuz obviously you've you've seen the uh, the evolution of how you've designed boats and how boating has changed and, and as far as how they're made you know let, let me know a little bit of the construction how this is made and So one of the features about the 41 Bahama is we use a solid glass bottom. Okay. And it's heavy. It's heavier than most. That gives you the stability. The low center of gravity acts like a pendulum. So it has less rock as associated with most deep Vs. Then we make the boat as light as we can from the water line up. We also have in the back two corners of the boat is two flat, basically uh, areas that actually, if you remember as a kid and you try mm -hmm. to step on a, uh, uh, wakeboard or anything, you jump on it, it won't, it's very hard to vertically push something through the water that yeah. has mass. Yeah. So those flat two areas act as little buffers. So it takes that perpetual rock out of the boat, um, which is a really nice because when I'm out there fishing all day, I don't like to have a rock and pitching. That was one of the big, big things is deep deep bottoms inherently have a, a well, different well, role. Even if it doesn't rock, you still have an option of putting a sea keeper or some type of gyro system on this as well, right? They've come, yep, sea keepers come a long way. They're very popular and it does improve and actually enhances the stability of this boat. Okay, so so let's go, let's go uh, um, start going forward and, and let me know some of the the things here. Oh, is that a sea keeper in there right there? Correct. Okay, great, guys. So this is a, a, a gyro stabilizer. It basically will minimize the rock even more that this Correct. boat 
you said doesn't have much of because you, the way you designed it. The way it's set up, it has a it, it doesn't have perpetual rocking motions that's associated with most deep D bottoms. That along with the way we've done our longitude strikes and the flat two pads, it actually has a one two rock and then it just settles in. It doesn't just complete. It doesn't keep pendulating back and forth. It actually you can feel it stabilizing. And this the seat keeper actually does a enhances that. I love this. It almost takes it hundred percent out. I love this and and. And you, you guys have easy access to a lot of things. What, what's going on here under this? Is this some, some storage? Oh, it's nice. It's a 30 gallon cooler. Okay. And it has a refrigeration plate in this particular boat. Also, the other thing is our bilges. We're really known for, I like attention to detail. So our bilges are actually, uh, they're not just really bilges, they're actually show pieces. And this is our standard, you know, some people think, oh, did you put that on for the show? No, this is how they all come. This, these Lexan covers actually make the bilge area usable. You put buckets down here, mop, chambers, etc. Most manufacturers just have an open exposed bilge, you can't put anything down there. Um, so that makes it nice. Plus they're on hinges where you can get access to them and you can see what's going on. You can, you can, if you need and you're not going to have anything get in there that shouldn't be in there. Correct. Which is huge, right? Because mm -hmm. how many times has somebody said, oh yeah, I had a couple of leaves and my, my bilge didn't work and now I'm sunk. That we use the best pumps, the best float switches, the best wire. Uh, everything is uh, heat shrinked and or tin coated copper wire. We just use the best of everything. We use the best stainless. We use the 316 stainless versus most manufacturers use 318. Let's go up here a little bit. Let's go ahead and, and work our way. All right, so dual row first time for you guys? Yeah, and that's Mike's, that's Mike's uh, forte. This was all his brainchild. And uh, we basically gave him a a clean shape slate to do whatever he wanted. Okay, so you mind if I talk to Michael a little bit about what he? Oh, Mike, no, I, I'm, All right. I'm, I'm, I'm enthused for you to do. Yeah, he, he's like, <laughs> get me off camera. <laughs> no, listen, guys, you know what it is. Until you realize how I do my videos, a lot of people get it after the fact, right? Because I want people to see the realism of one, the hard work, show exactly how beautiful this boat i mean look at the details on this guys this is absolutely stunning and i want to talk to that now so michael tell me what when you i guess got hired right naval architect yes to do some stuff here what what was the thought process and what did you do so scott and i've been talking for several years about being a naval architect and running this factory okay and uh we finally uh we finally got together and said let's do it and Scott's very kind, but uh, anything that we develop or design at Bahama Boat Works, it's a team effort. Yeah. Um, we all had a big part in this, and especially our customers. Our customer feedback indicated that they would like to have a more uh, family-oriented lifestyle. And <clears throat> that's how the uh, second row seating became uh, one of the options we wanted to offer. Okay, so... I, I, I see that there's a huge hardtop here. Is this the original hardtop that he used to have, the other 41, or no? No, yeah, this is a new hardtop. Um, it's the same footprint as the old hardtop. Okay. Uh, the only thing that's different is um, it has some integrated features. Uh, we added some depth to it so we can have an integrated sunshade in the back. Uh, the speakers are integrated. The, uh, we also have a freshwater rain shower head in the port corner there. I did notice that also earlier. And I see everything is powder coated and... Yes, everything is powder coated. Typically, um, our structure is a polished aluminum. Okay. Um, and we wanted to make uh, some modifications to just enhance some of the style. But, uh, let me know uh, a little bit about the helm and, and what the thought process is sure. uh, of so, this. Sure. Um, as electronics are evolving, they're getting bigger. Okay. Um, not like cell phones, but... Um, we needed to have a larger helm to incorporate these 22 side-by-sides. Uh, we wanted a pod-style helm to give us uh, an updated look. And we wanted to add some features that uh, some of our customers have requested, like a glove box with uh, charging ports. I noticed there's also a step up here. Yes. Um, we wanted to have better visibility for, for our um, customers. Um, some of our boats are, are very long. Yeah. Where the helm is, um, many of our customers were putting in three inch steps. So what we wanted to do is offer this as an option. Yeah. Um, so this is an option on this particular boat? It is. I'm 6'5", 225 and ripped. I always say that. 
He's laughing about that, guys. And and you're what? You're you're six three and I'm six three, uh, one eighty nine. There you go, guys. Let's go <laughs> forward. Come here. <laughs> hey, Scott, you giggled a little too fast there on that one. I don't know. That said a lot. All right. So this is this is the family this is the family side of things now. Okay. So so I see. This is exactly right. There's points in the boat where people just get to where they're going to go, maybe a sandbar, a certain area. They want to just go ahead and maybe have a quick snack, a lunch. You can hang out here. You can be comfortable here if you're driving. We have a lot of space on this boat. 41 feet, right? 41 feet. Uh, yeah, there's a ton of space. And, and this, is, this is an area that people can gather and just hang out. We don't have it shown, but uh, these fittings right here have carbon fiber poles. So you can get another sunshade up front? We have a full sunshade that we don't have it up today. Carbon carbon rods? Yes, sir. And it attaches right under to these hooks under the hard top. Okay. And this whole front area is uh, shaded and with six foot four headroom. Scott, where are you guys making these? In West Palm here, right here in West Palm Beach. Really? Yeah, this is basically, this show is in our backyard. How have I not gone to your factory? You didn't know about me. <laughs> I didn't know you were ripped. <laughs> What? <laughs> all the editing stuff I told you about, it's all back on there. No, no, no. All right, yeah, all right, yeah, come on. Yeah, all right, all right, come on. Let's go, guys. Yeah, let's get back. 20, let's get back into. Minutes. Okay, so, so, so this is this is where now a lot of people are gonna start really watching, cause now you have more storage, and that's is is that a? Yeah, that's a, a freezer plate in here. A, a cooling plate. Yes, it is, and. Uh, we don't have it in here, but we have a drink caddy that houses all your liquor bottles. It's, it's got on the way, a, though, isn't it? It's on the way. Um, no, no, it, that's how we can use Mr. Yeah. Well, well, you guys yeah. let the people decide. Yeah, yeah right. No, no, it, it's, it's ultimately, an, it's an the if you want it. Yeah, because and it houses all of your liquor bottles, mm -hmm. um, cans, glasses. There's an ice bucket in there, so if you want to hang out here, um, pop this up. Everything's chilled. And I see that you're 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 standing. Wait for it. Everybody calls me Chicho because of the boat ramp stuff I do. But this is my serious side. <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay, so you're standing on something, Michael, that's huge. Yes. So what are we what are we standing on? Okay, Scott, I'm gonna have to go to your factory. You know this, right? If you're here. We're 20 minutes and, away. Oh, 20 minutes, we'll be there. Guys, we'll be right there. We'll be in a little bit. We're going to stop the show and we're going to go in there. Okay, so this, I see that this is your thinking of, I need to put a lot of fish in here, and well, this is why this it's is huge. Actually not our, fish boxes. our fish boxes are above the waterline. Here's another feature. Ooh. No need for a macerator pump. When I was running boats and you put macerators, are always a big trouble. We have our fish boxes above the waterline. They drain overboard. They're, they're under here. This is a storage area for going. One of the reasons we named it Bahama is because you're made to go to the Bahamas, right? So we, this is, you can, a lot of the new thing is they're not so new, but people are renting houses for two or three weeks. They're loading their boats full of all their, their storage on board that need to be, and then they transfer them up to the house. So flow deck storage for nicely finished. Everything, we maximize the space for the contour of the, the hatch, for the, the contour of the box. It matches the boat so we can maximize the uh i like the fact that the fish boxes are up top you know as the older i get the lazier i get to be honest with you and i like to be able to just go ahead and grab it open the thing i probably won't have those cushions when i'm fishing right. on the boat and just throw them in there without even worrying about it and and like what he's saying is you have plenty of storage also the same system that we talked about earlier yeah and same also, if you notice the backs of our hatches and everything is hand finished everything's hand finished and everything is made where it's it's very rigid where there's no deflection that's what i i can't stand getting on boats and i've been on some nice sport fishing boats that that when you walk on the hatches they deflect and they creak and they make noise i call it hatch chatter or when you're running or you flex can, right you don't want to uh, especially when you're six five two twenty five both of us you don't want look all three of us on here guys just you just a so, move yeah yeah we're good okay show me those fish boxes because that i, I want to see I want to see if I can fit a swordfish in here. What's up? Let's go. Yeah, let's now, go. Up a little, if the cushions weren't on it. Yeah, yeah, of course. But we, we, we're not going to take but the cushions they're, off. They're really large. You put big wahoos, tunas, etc. The nicest thing is when you're rinsing it out, you don't have a macerator. It drains above. Table easily removed so I can get towards the bow if I wanted right. to. Yep. 
The other thing is you can see the difference on these hatches. Our fish box hatches are about twice as thick, so there's more insulation on them. That's a big deal. Again, it's airtight, yeah. which is another big deal. A lot of them coolers and, and fish boxes lose their uh, cooling capabilities but just because there's, there's the air. Scott, let's just say that I wanted this completely open. That could also be a... If I don't want, if I don't want any fish boxes, I want this completely open. I want to have it as a dance floor. We have a raised deck, okay, which I'm partial to for the fishing aspects. It has two giant fish boxes, okay, and we've got several of them in Louisiana running charter boats, and they literally catch six, eight, a thousand pounds of tuna on there each trip. Uh, and whether it's tuna, cobia, swordfish, snapper, they love those fish boxes because they take a party of six out. And then they take about six, eight hundred pounds of ice. And if anybody knows about fishing, you put a tuna in there, it'll burn up some ice fast. Yeah. So they have to they keep the fish really nice and cool. There's a, there's a sister's uh, fish box with it, so you can keep clean ice in it. So okay. when we go to the islands, we have one designated fish box, and then we have another ice chest that, for, for clean ice. So we can transfer the new ice to the fish without contaminating our... Uh, without oh, contaminating oh, the other okay, boxes. so as a granddad, I got a four-year-old grandson that's gonna use this non-skid and these really wide gunnels to run and jump into the water. I know I would have to stop him from doing that, but I already see him because he has the option to do that. Look at the size of these gunnels. Yeah, no, it's a family, everybody loves these boats and that's the, why we developed this one um, is because we wanted for that. That was, it was big. And the freeboard is high. Bars now the sandbar phenomenon is crazy everybody's doing it but it's blowing hard out or they just want to do the family thing yeah because if you can't hit the water you could still go to the sandbar Correct. right hey it's blowing 25 we're not going to go deep sea fishing today right. we're going to go hang out at the sandbar and it's just a great day you get to use the boat on a different way if, it, if it's flat calm you're not going to be at the sandbar you're right. going to be as far as you can trying to catch all the fish you want and that was the accumulation of this boat and the thought was Guys should go out, fish the boat, enjoy it, come back, clean the boat up, or just come right back in, pick up the kids, and go to the... Let's talk about the wives and the kids, because you know what's going to sell this boat? What, the, the, the wife is going to buy this, right? And I want to show her the cabin. Come over here so we can see in here. Um, well, one of our really cool features is our, the way our doors work. We have a really nice heavy-duty magnet, so the things, when it's open, it's not swinging back and forth. Okay. All of our hinges are blind fasteners. This looks like... This looks like a, a, a screw, but it's actually the head of a nut. So all of our hinges are, are studded, so you don't, and that makes it nice and clean versus a bolt and it's sheared off. This is a really nice finish, so you don't snag yourself going in and out. Plus we have a real nice seal, a 360 degree seal around the door. We've got a threshold. We have got a real nice threshold down there so the so water won't run down into the con cockpit. It closes like a safe door, really nice. This is all handmade, each one's hand fit. I love that, and the finishes only. are super, I mean, your quality control is out of hand because I, I'm looking for defects and problems and I'm not finding any. Well, the other thing is, this is a true mortised in, a true mortised in deadbolt lock. I mean, you have true security, especially when you're in the islands and you want to stow all your gear. You don't have to, you don't have to hustle it up to the house every day. You can leave your gear on board. And that's a thick door as well, guys. All right, this is what, this is what I wanted to show them because you have a whole separate head in here. It, what other options are I see that there's something next to to the head there okay, what's going on extra there? batteries your refrigeration okay um, extra batteries is for like the sea keepers mm -hmm. and, and our refrigeration is also 12 volt uh, freshwater flushing head you get six foot six headroom you got rod racks you can do multiple styles of rods and we can set it up to, to fit your rods but there's more than enough room to put head uh, to stow some rods in here um, there's a access mm -hmm. Okay, so you can get access to your panel. That's nice. Really nice. I love that. Very, critical. very good, guys. I mean, yes. Our, our, our wow. Awesome. Okay. Okay. We've got some really great craftsmen in our shop. Yes, guys. Look at this. Wow. Okay. You see, this is this is the heart of what people want to see, right? You can leave that open until we're done. Okay. All right. You can just get down here and do another shot of that later. So okay, so. Because I can't be here all day, regrettably, i got to film the show, all right? Some people are going to ask, you know, fuel capacity, what's the range on this with these quad 450s? What are we doing top speed? Is it, are these 450s or the 500s that are on here? 400. 400s. 400s, okay. Intense. Okay, so what are we doing top speed with these 400s as, as they're out right you're now? Hitting, you're hitting the 70 mile an hour mark. 70 miles an hour. Yeah. Okay, so, so you're moving fast on a big boat. Yeah, and you're cruise, you can cruise 50 if you want. 50. Um, have you put other, other engines on this? We've done two boats now with uh, 
four or five hundreds. Okay. We've done uh, two six hundreds. We've done four uh, fifties. We've done four hundreds. We've done R's. We've done you know the three hundred R's. What's the configuration that you like the most for for your your four, style? Four V tens. Four V tens. Okay. All right. H how can they get in contact with you guys? Because I want them to see the specs. You know, we, we got top speed. What's what's the fuel capacity on this guy? 580. 580. So you. That's one uh, uh, another challenge, right? Because I'm hearing that also. Sometimes you can't get fuel if you're in the islands for whatever reason. So you want to have enough fuel to go over there and back without worrying, I got to find fuel, you know? Because you don't want that at the back of your mind when you're away from home, right? So, so that's, that's, that's a big tank. One tank or two tanks? Or, or two tanks. That's the other thing is our, the way we designed this boat with our longitudinal tanks, whether the boat's empty or full, it rides the same. A lot of manufacturers, because of cost and space, we maximize our below deck storage compartment because we put our fuels in saddle tanks. And we don't have to worry about, well, my front tank's full, my back tank's empty, and worrying about that CG transferring so much. Yeah. The tanks in the sides, whether they're full or empty, the CG stays the same. So the ride of the boat stays the same, whether it's full or empty. This man is a natural. I'm telling you. You are a natural. <laughs> you want you want a job? Let me know. No. I'll, come on, Scott. All right, where can they go online to get more information? Bahamaboatworks.com. Bahamaboatworks.com, guys. Check it out. Offer Montaner, Palm Beach. That wasn't that hard. It really it wasn't that hard. No. Guys, go ahead and uh, check them out. It's going to be an amazing show. We got to take advantage. Favorite. This Palm Beach is, is dominating the shows now. It's, it's the number one show as far as I'm concerned. Oh, I, I, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, I just, anymore. Scott, Beach has got I it. just did a video with Informa showing the entire setup. And it's 50% bigger. This is the place to be. And I'm saying it. Well, me. We're happy to be here. I'm saying it. This is going to be the place to be. Right here. And I'm from Miami. <laughs> I hate to say this. But I, when I'm done here, I'm going to go have a drink. Probably a Sprite because this is my dry ear. <laughs> But I'm going to have a drink, I'm going to eat, I'm going to have a good, and I don't have to worry about parking or anything like that. It's easy. So, big shout out to Palm Beach, Alfred Montana, and Megan Cena. As always, I'm out of here, guys. Thank you. See you guys. Bye.